Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. Just a couple of short notes for you today. This hour, President Chabakudoshi is meeting with Australia's new permanent representative, Ambassador James Larson. And then earlier today, the President met uh, virtually with Ambassador Alia Ahmed Saif Al Thani of Qatar and Ambassador Fergal Methan of Ireland. And they're the co facilitators of the SDG Summit political declaration. That's the text that is expected, scheduled to be adopted at the beginning of the SDG Summit on 18th of September. And as the President said today, an ambitious political declaration is key for the success of the SDG Summit and to guide our work on advancing the implementation of the 2030 Agenda. That's everything I have for you today. Do you have any questions for me? Yeah, Abdel Hamid. Does GA have any plans to visit a conflict area like the Middle East? There, there are no trips to be announced. Evelyn, is that okay? I'm not I don't understand what he's going to do on the SDG summit because that program seems to be unfulfilled, failing, and so forth. The SDG Summit? Well, the SDG Summit is the big conference that is going to be opening up ANGA high-level week. So it's on the 18th and 19th, on Monday and Tuesday. It's a day and a half. And so the idea is to turbocharge, basically get the process working again. The hope is that member states come with commitments, with big commitments. So they're not just saying, okay, you know, we, we agreed to this in 2015. The hope is that they come with really big commitments of what they're going to do going forward. Yeah. Yeah, Abdel Amin. If you recall, on 30th of December, the GA adopted a resolution to, to refer the occupation of Palestinian territory to the ICJ. Mm -hmm. uh, and the submission has been concluded now. Is the president of the GA following the development with the ICJ since it's a GA resolution? Does he follow the development there? The president was very um, obviously uh, in line with the General Assembly resolution. The president was engaged in making sure that everything went on time to the ICJ. From there, it's really up to the ICJ, and the ICJ can update you. It's not as though they give weekly reports or monthly reports, but the ICJ is the, is the um, entity to speak to. It's not me. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, let me check in the chat. I don't see anything. Thank you very much. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. As part of her visit to Brazil, the Deputy Secretary General, Amina Mohamed, will today travel to Santarém in the state of Pará in the Amazon region. On the first two days of her trip to the country, the Deputy Secretary General and her delegation had a number of meetings with the federal government in Brasilia, including with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mauro Luiz Vera, the Minister of the General Secretariat of the Presidency, Marcio Macedo, the Minister of the Environment and Climate, Marina Silva, and the Special Advisor to the President for International Affairs, Celso Amorim. She also met senior officials representing the Ministries of Financing and Planning, amongst others. Ms. Mohammed commended the government's efforts to strengthen the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals and discussed the importance of raising ambition at the global stage for the 2030 Agenda, Climate Action, 
and reforming of the international financial system. The Deputy Secretary General also engaged with the President of, of the Senate, Rodrigo Pacheco, and with the representatives of ABDE, the Brazilian, the Brazilian Development Financial Institutions. Ms. Mohamed also met with the UN country team on the organization's collaboration with the Brazilian government to achieve the SDGs. On Niger, the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs and its partners remain committed to delivering assistance to the most vulnerable people in the country. Humanitarian operations continue uninterrupted and road movements are possible and have been authorized. On Monday, the UN Humanitarian Air Service, UNHAS, organized special flights to Diffa, Dawa, and Agadez to transport staff from the UN and our partners following authorization previously obtained by the transitional authorities. As you'll recall, some 4.3 million people in Niger, the vast majority of whom are women and children, need humanitarian aid. OCHA stresses that all parties must continue to respect humanitarian principles and allow for unhindered access for humanitarian workers to all people in need across the country. At a press conference in Kinshasa today, the head of our peacekeeping mission in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Bintu Keita, highlighted the challenges ahead for MONUSCO's transition, including the significant insecurity that still plagues 13 territories in North Kivu, South Kivu, and in Turi, the provinces where the mission is still present and which require sustained joint action by national security forces and UN peacekeepers. Ms. Geta described 2024 as the year of transition, where the mission will increasingly transfer its responsibilities, including the protection of civilians, to the government of the DRC. In that regard, MONUSCO is working closely with authorities to ensure that national capacities meet minimum security requirements to allow for a responsible drawdown of the mission. The expertise and resources of the UN family are also being leveraged to help the government implement national plans to support humanitarian needs and development. We have an update from Mali, where more than 460 peacekeepers from MINUSMA's Egyptian Combat and Convoy Escort Battalion have left the town of Gao in the country's northern part. For more than a year, they operated in a difficult environment, escorting convoys from Gao to Tessalit via Kidal and Agalhok, under constant threat from improvised explosive devices by armed groups. Their work contributed to safe passage for logistical convoys and helped to protect civilians. The departure of the, of the Egyptian contingent was planned before the Security Council resolution that terminated the mission. But it is a step towards the complete withdrawal of MINUSMA by the 31st of December. In the coming weeks, peacekeepers from the Senegalese, Burkinabe, Ivorian, and Bangladeshi contingents will also leave as the outlying camps of Ugasugu, Gundam, Ber, and Menaka are closed. At a press conference in Juba today, the special representative of the Secretary General in South Sudan and head of the peacekeeping mission there, Nicholas Haysom, welcomed recent progress on the peace agreement, including the establishment of the government-led Joint Task Force for the Implementation of Constitution-Making and Electoral Processes and Parliament's consideration of the National Elections Act. However, Mr. Haysom warned that time is running out and critical decisions must be made urgently by political leaders if South Sudan is to meet the December 2024 election timeline. He also expressed concern about the impact of the Sudan crisis on South Sudan and condemned continuing intercommunal violence and cattle raiding. Mr. Haysom reiterated the UN's full support to the people of South Sudan and issued a call for urgent action to complete the transitional period of the peace agreement to create the foundation for peace and sustainable development. Turning to Sudan, the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs warns that hunger and displacement due to the ongoing war are spiraling out of control. More than 6 million people in Sudan, about 13% of the population, are now one step away from famine. This is according to the latest analysis today from the Integrated Food Security Phase Classification, or IPC. Across the country, more than 20 million people are facing high levels of acute food insecurity. This is due to the conflict, economic decline, and mass displacement. And on that note, just to give you a sense of how many people continue to flee the violence in Sudan, more than 334,000 people have been internally displaced in just one week, according to the International Organization for Migration. IOM also tells us that since the war started, more than 3 million people have been displaced inside Sudan. Meanwhile, the UN Refugee Agency says that more than 855,000 people have fled to neighboring countries. 
Our peacekeeping colleagues in the Central African Republic tell us that the arrival of Chadian refugees in the border area with Chad in the northwest of the country continues to generate tensions, as well as additional pressure on an already dire humanitarian situation. UN peacekeepers have stepped up patrolling in the area and are supporting humanitarian actors who are assisting those in need. They've also established a security perimeter and provided medical treatment to civilians who sought protection at, the, at a nearby Minusca base following an attack by armed elements in Nana Bakasa in the Uham prefecture. The mission is continuing to patrol in the area, which is now calm. Peacekeepers are also conducting robust long-range patrols in Sam Unja and Unda Jale in the northeast in response to a tense security situation there. The presence of UN personnel has helped reassure the population to go about their daily activities. And we close today with thanks to our friends in Montevideo who have paid Uruguay's regular budget dues in full for this year. Uruguay becomes the 127th member state to pay up, and we say gracias to them. And that's it for me. Yes, Edie. Uh, thank you, Farhan. Uh, two questions. First, on um, Russian drone strikes uh, that have hit Ukrainian grain stores. Uh, does the Secretary General have any comment on that? And also on the grain issue, is there um, any update on possible talks between the parties to revive the Black Sea Grain Initiative? Uh, on the latter, uh, there's no update to share about any possible talks. We continue to reach out uh, at various levels uh, to make sure that uh, we can continue to do as much as possible uh, to get uh, Ukrainian and Russian uh, food and fertilizer uh, out to markets. Uh, but it is difficult, and it's made more difficult uh, by the first thing you asked about, which is to say attacks on ports. And of course, we're against uh, all attacks on civilian facilities. But uh, it, the Secretary General made it clear in his remarks uh, to you uh, the difficulties created by any uh, by anything that would impede uh, further work at our at the at the Ukrainian and other ports. Um, and but uh, specifically on hitting a grain store that destroys um, thousands yeah. and thousands of tons of of grain. I exactly, and and one of the things that's discouraging is. Of course, this is food that the wider world will need, and we want to make sure that uh, food can go out to people. So we want any attacks on such facilities to be discouraged. Um, I, I had a second question um, on, the, um, on Niger. Mm -hmm. um, have there been any evacuations of UN uh, staff who are in Niger, and um, is there any update that you have on negotiations? Uh, there's, there's no real progress on uh, negotiations to share with you. Uh, as you know, Leonardo Santos Samao, our special envoy for West Africa and, and the Sahel, uh, talked to you, and he made clear that uh, today, in fact, uh, he is in Bamako. Uh, and he is traveling to all of the various uh, countries under his purview as soon as possible. Uh, but, uh, but there's no real progress on that front. Uh, as for UN personnel, we're, we're staying, uh, continuing to stay in the country. Deshi? I'm surprised no one's asking questions. Uh, I have a couple of questions on China. Uh, I think one good story, one bad story. So let's start with the good one. Uh, the Chinese National Energy Administration uh, sh reviewed data that for the first time ever in, in the history of China that the renewable energy electronic, uh, electricity gener gener uh, generating capacity passed that of the coal. Uh, especially the first half year of this year, the, the wind and solar generation Increased on uh, on year-on-year -year basis, it's like it's twenty-three point five percent. What do you think that would contribute to the um, to the long cold uh, climate 
sustainability? Uh, well, this is certainly uh, what the Secretary General wants all nations to pursue, and he is very pleased uh, by the nations that actually move ahead towards uh, using sustainable energy resources and move away uh, from coal, which uh, he has made clear has no future for humanity. So the bad story. Uh, for the past few days, because of the typhoon Duxuri, uh, in Beijing and metropolitan area there in in China, they recorded uh, they recorded a a 140 years f uh, the the record breaking pre precipitation of 140 years that led to 20 people died, uh, 27 still not reached, and and more than more than 400 4,000 people. If affected by this rain, heavy rain, uh, what does the Secretary General has to say on on this incident? Uh, the Secretary General is saddened uh, by uh, the news that uh, so many people have uh, been killed uh, by the heavy rains in Beijing, and he hopes uh, that those who are missing will uh, will be found safely. Uh, but certainly, uh, although there's no direct linkage we, we're making to climate change. The simple fact uh, that warmer weather leads to more intense weather events is, uh, is a large part of the problem we're facing all over the world. Which is why Farhan brings me to my third part. We saw more and more extreme climates like you just mentioned. Uh, can you remind us what would be the goal for the, for the upcoming climate summit in September and what do you, what's your expectation for all the world leaders? Well, the Secretary General made clear uh, when he spoke to you about, uh, about climate just uh, recently that this needs to be something where uh, all of those who show up show up with concrete uh, proposals. There have to be concrete steps and concrete action taken at the climate summit. Otherwise, there's, uh, there's no point uh, in, uh, in simply holding discussions. Uh, yes, Abdul Hamid. Uh, thank you. A few days ago, the Israeli court decided to evict uh, a whole village called Ras Jarraba in the Negev, which has 500 people, to give room for the Jewish city of Dimuna to expand. So expelling the Bedouins from their homes to allow a Jewish settlement to expand. Do you have any comment on that? Isn't that apartheid also the second part of the question? Uh, I, although I won't characterize it uh, one way or another, we are against all expulsions, all uh, forced transfers of, uh, of uh, the Palestinian population, and have made that clear in our regular reports uh, to the Security Council. Uh, Margaret Bashir? On Niger, you, first of all, you said the UNHAS flights are moving. So does that mean the airspace is open again? And you also referred to the transitional authorities. Who, who, who do you mean by the transitional authorities? Uh, we're, we're talking about wherever we go, whenever we need permissions in any area, we have to get permission from de facto authorities, even if they are not uh, 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 those whom we recognize as the government. As you know, we recognize the elected government. Uh, uh, right, and of you course, called uh, them transitional. you called them transitional authorities, as if you're transitioning, as if it's the coup leaders and, we're, and they're the transitional uh, government. Uh, you didn't say de facto. Uh, sorry, I misspoke then. Uh, it's, uh, I, uh, okay. they, they are the de facto authorities. Uh, uh, yes, uh, you and then Mario. Uh, hi, Farhan. Uh, my question is regarding to Black Sea deal. Uh, the question is, if uh, Russia doesn't come back to the deal, or is there will be any alternative way for the United Nations to send any humanitarian needs to countries who receive the grain or humanitarian needs from Ukraine? Uh, we are exploring all possible options to see what can be done uh, to make sure that uh, uh, Ukrainian grain, as well as Russian food and fertilizer go to markets, and we're going to continue to work on that front. Uh, obviously, the, it would be easier if, if uh, that was accomplished within the framework of the Black Sea Initiative, but uh, we are, we're doing what we can uh, in, in, any, uh, in any alternative arrangements that we can come up with. Just following, what if it takes longer than expected? 
anything that takes more time will make it harder for people to get uh, food that they need. It will uh, contribute to a rise in world food prices and it will be worse overall for the population everywhere. So what we're doing, uh, trying to do is, uh, is uh, make sure that we can uh, get exports out as uh, quickly and efficiently as possible. Mario. Thanks, Farhan. The Security Council is voting this afternoon to expand the, the mandate of the mission in, in Colombia. I know there's not a final decision, but do you have any comment on the uh, additional functions that the government requested for the verification mission, namely to supervise the ceasefire with the ELN? Oh, uh, we are willing to uh, provide whatever functions uh, the Security Council uh, asks of us uh, when they meet later today, but, uh, but we'll await their decision. Uh, yes, Evelyn, you had a question? Yes, I did. Uh, the withdrawal of MINUSMA from Mali is leaving hundreds and hundreds of local, of local people unemployed. Um, is there any remedy for that, or is the government looking at it? They, they, it's from Timbuktu all the way down to the capital. Uh, we are trying to see what can be done in terms of employment opportunities uh, for Malians through uh, the development work that we do. But ultimately, whenever UN uh, forces uh, leave any country, there is uh, an economic impact to that. And uh, that is an unavoidable uh, fact, but, uh, but we are uh, having to go along with this withdrawal in compliance uh, with the wishes of the Security Council and of the Malian authorities. Uh, yes, Abdelhamid. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Bathili uh, of uh, Libya sounded uh, optimistic in his latest statement about the elections. And he said they, there was a meeting six plus six, and they are agreeing on some schedule. Do you have update on what's going on in, with, on SMEAL in Libya? Well, uh, the, the mission put out a, a statement from Mr. Bathali over the weekend, and I would just refer you to that. Uh, as we get further updates uh, from the mission, uh, uh, we'll, we'll uh, share those with you as they come. And with that, over to you, Paulina. Uh, Mr. Santos Shamal, can you hear us? Yes, yes, I can. Okay, great. All right, we're we're set now. Now let's get started. Um, without any further ado, uh, uh, we have with us the Secretary General's Special Representative for West Africa and the Sahel, Leonardo Santos Shamal, who is talking to you from Accra, Ghana. Mr. Santos Shamal, uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, let me reiterate our condemnation of the seizure of power by force in Niger. The unfolding crisis, if not addressed, will exacerbate the deteriorating uh, security situation in the region. It will also negatively impact the development and lives of the populations in a country where 4.3 million people need humanitarian assistance. Niger and the region do not need coups d'etat. Population deserve to enjoy peace, democratic governance, and prosperity. Heads of state of the region gathered in Abuja last Sunday for the ECOWAS extraordinary summit on the situation in Niger and have taken decisive action commensurate with the gravity of the situation. We remain engaged to support ECOWAS efforts towards restoring a constitutional order and consolidating democratic gains in Niger. Thank you. This is my opening remarks. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. We'll now turn the floor over to questions. Uh, first off, from Edith Lederer of the Associated Press. Um, thank you, Mr. Santos Chamal. Um, on behalf of the United Nations Correspondents Association for doing this briefing, um, it's a subject we're all interested in. 
Um, my question is, um, the military leaders of Mali and Burkina Faso have said that the deployment of any foreign forces from ECOWAS or elsewhere would be considered an act of war and they would join the Niger coup leaders uh, to help fight. Um, you were in Nigeria for the ECOWAS meeting. Do you expect ECOWAS to go ahead with the deployment of troops in light of this? Have you still been having any new discussions on what might come next in efforts to restore President Bazoum to power? Uh, uh, the uh, summit to give one week to uh, the military junta to hand a back power to President Bazoum. Uh, if this doesn't happen with, uh, after that week, then other options are on the making, including military intervention, including the use of force, that's what they said. That period, in my view, is try to give time for a peaceful settlement to take place. So there have been airports underway. Yeah, you may uh, uh, recall that uh, they asked the uh, president of uh, um, Chad to go to uh, Niame to uh, meet some of the key personalities involved on these matters. So, and I believe that other efforts also are underway. So, I hope that uh, the use of force. Uh, eventually will not be necessary. Is the UN involved in any of these new efforts to peacefully resolve this situation? We are supporting uh, uh, COAS, uh because our role is precisely that, and not be aware, uh, but we are not engaged on uh, uh, any negotiations so far but we are fully supporting the all efforts to restore uh, demo, uh, democratic order in that country. Thanks. Uh, Ibtissam Azam. Hi, my name is Ibtissam Azam, Al Arab Al Jadid newspaper. I have a follow up. Uh, when you say you're supporting uh, all efforts, does this also include the statements you um, referred to by Okasok? Uh, which says, uh, which talks about, the, which includes the use of force in case the um, the military does not uh, reinstate uh, the elected president. And um, if I am just to to um, to clarify, so from the UN, from your office, you are not in any direct contact with the uh, military, with the coup um, people, and. Uh, when was the last time you were in contact with the President Mohammed Bazoum? Thank you. Uh, well, a, a few weeks ago, I visited uh, uh, Niamh. May. It was uh, well before the coup. Uh, this time around, when uh, the coup started, uh, I tried to contact him without much success, but I sent him a message of solidarity. Uh, so uh, now the decision of uh, use force, if necessary, it's it's not a UN uh, uh, decision. It's a Equas uh, uh, decision. But what we 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 we, we value and we support all is that uh, all means uh, to find a, a peaceful solution for 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 the problem should be uh, used. But I recognize also that uh, ECOWAS has the right to take other measures if they feel fit. Um, ju just to clarify, sorry, just a follow up. So, d d does that mean? Um, I mean, it's clear for me that it's uh, ECOWAS uh, decision to or um, for the, the, the issue of the use of force. 
but does the UN support that or not? Or do you believe in such case you would need, they would need um, a Security Council resolution? No, the, the UN only can add with, with the UN mandate. Without that mandate, uh, uh, UN doesn't have the mandate to, to intervene. That's why I was saying that the eventual use of force is a, 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 um, a sub-regional decision by ECOWAS. Okay, Celia de Laveren. Celia de Laveren, Africa Confidential. Uh, you talked about giving the Genta one week. Do you think it's realistic? And uh, do you think also uh, it's, what is the word, realistic to, to impose sanction on a country which is the uh, poorest country in Africa? Well, uh, uh, Mali, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Niger uh, is a member of a, a regional organization. So when you do so, yeah, that means that you, you accept to abide your uh, political uh, behavior in line with the principles of that organization. On the other hand, yeah, you know by being a member what is going to, it might happen to you if you don't uh, uh, follow, uh, if, if you violate the rules governing the organization of, uh, of which you are uh, Part of, and therefore, uh, to say that one week, one week can be more than enough, if everybody talks in good faith to find a, a, a workable solution. If everybody wants to avoid a bloodshed. About the sanction, please. But uh, uh, the sanctions were, were, are now uh, have been imposed uh, with immediate effect. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, underway, but even uh, equals, equals as far as I understand, it's not for use of of force. It's for negotiating a settlement of the uh, of the situation. That's why they dispatched the president of uh, of uh, Chad and the other uh, envoys try to find a, a solution. The, but what do they say is that they are going to use other uh, use force if this uh, peaceful means fail. Murad Al Jazeera. Thank you. Uh, from the statement that issued by the Security Council on the issue, it doesn't, seem, it doesn't seem that the Security Council is willing to take actions. It supports the ECOWAS, but it doesn't seem that the, the Security Council itself ready or willing to take actions. Do you think there is a need for the Security Council to take actions on this issue? Well, I don't speak on behalf of the uh, uh, Security Council. I don't have a mandate for that. Uh, what I can say is that uh, the Security Council uh, is, is issue a communique condemning the, 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 the coup. So this can be a first state, a stage before eventually taking other measures if needed. But uh, also, it was clear by the communique of the Security Council that uh, the organ is supporting the initiatives uh, led by ECOWAS. Okay, Margaret Bashir. Hi, it's Margaret Bashir from Voice of America. Um, could you tell us, have you spoken with anyone in the military, any of the mutineers, and have they given you any signal whatsoever that this could be reversible? And could you also just tell us where you're speaking to us from today? Well, I, I didn't talk to any uh, of the military involved on that. As I said, we are supporting yeah, what uh, uh, the whole process is conducted by ECOWAS. And this will be the line we, we accepted. So we are going to continue along this uh, 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 this path to support the uh, re, uh, the, 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 the regional organization. And, and, and by the way, he's speaking from Accra, from Ghana. From Ghana. And uh, have you had uh, any uh, sign that this could be reversible? Well, it's difficult because the situation is very fluid. What I know is that uh, it, uh, different member states are preparing themselves to use force if necessary. But as I said, 
uh, the situation is, is fluid, but there are these uh, 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 efforts of uh, find a peaceful solution for the problem. Everybody is giving, giving uh, 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 pr um, priority to these uh, efforts. Uh, Michelle Nichols. Thank you, Michelle Nichols from Reuters. Um, how concerned are you that this could deteriorate, deteriorate into a regional conflict and how quickly that could happen? Well, my concern is that uh, if uh, uh, measures are not taken uh, uh, or the situation is not reversed, it's very likely that the spread of terrorism in the region can increase. Uh, so uh, the concern is there, not only my concern, but also the concern of the region. But uh, uh, no one wants to see regional conflict ha happening. But on the other hand, uh, according to what I understood during the summit, not only on this summit, but also in the uh, 7 uh, July summit, which took place in Bissau, the region decided to be intolerant to illegal assertions of power. Okay. Uh, Abdul Hamid Sayam. Thank you, Abdul Hamid Sayam from the Arabic Daily Al Quds Al Arabi. Sir, since the end of the Cold War, there at least had been 82 coup, military coups in Africa. Many of them were able to establish themselves and oust the previous government, being elected or not elected. Recently, there was a coup in Mali, in Burkina Faso, in many countries. In Egypt, 2013, a bloody coup. Yet the world were able to tolerate and accept this military coup. Why this is an exception? Why do you think this military coup is an exception and the African Union, ECOWAS, the UN will never, will not tolerate this uh, military coup? Thank you. Well, ECOWAS has a, 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 a protocol on governance on them, which uh, uh, member said have to abide uh, uh, by uh, the last ordinary summit in Bissau. The decision was that uh, was twofold. One that well, uh, uh, the region ECOWAS has to assist those countries in transition, namely Mali, Guinea, and Burkina Faso to complete the process of transition through elections. Second, not accept coup d'etat anymore. So it is in line with the second part of the decision that the heads of state and uh, of the region are taking this uh, 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 action, which is different from what they did in the past. Because they understood that, well, this pattern of having a coup d'etat than having a, a negotiation two years uh, 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 also uh, transition has to stop as in order to discourage a similar situation to happen in the, in the future because we have to take into account that until a few years ago uh, all uh, West African Sahel were seen as the uh, model of uh, stability and democratic rule and that uh, that uh, image has to be restored linda fasula um linda fasula npr at the un my question is about uh potential negotiations i believe uh you said that you know the po possible threat of the use of force by ECOWAS would only occur after uh unless there are uh, peace discussions fail or something to that effect that there have to be some peace talks. So uh, how much time? I mean, is there any indication, number one, that the coup leaders will will participate at all or might participate just to delay um, the possible use of force? Well, I, I cannot go further than uh, uh, it does because uh, we are an external uh, organization to echo different institutions. Uh, I'm talking based on what I could gather in, in the summit. And what I did, 
was that uh, uh, first they gave a week the whole process uh, to happen. Therefore, to find to that a uh, um, uh, peaceful solution be found. After which, then they will take other measures. That's what I can I can say. Uh, Kristen Salome. I wonder, Kristen Salumi from Al Jazeera, um, could you put into perspective for us the importance of Niger for UN operations in the region, especially given in Mali the peacekeeping force there is coming to an end? Um, we were told that there's over a thousand UN employees in Niger, some 300 international and so on. What kind of work is being done there and what is at risk um, as instability increases in the region? Thank you. Well, so far, uh, our colleagues in, uh, uh, in uh, Niger continue to provide to run th their programs. There is no sign uh, uh, that this can happen. In uh, uh, Mali, it's a different story because given the uh, withdrawal of uh, Nusma, we have to make sure that they can operate in security. If, they, and, uh, if there is no security, uh, obviously they cannot operate. So programs will have to be suspended if there is no guarantee of uh, security for them to operate. Nabil Abisab. Thank you, Nabil Abisab, Al Arabi TV station. Um, uh, have you had any discussions in the last two days with uh, authorities in uh, Mali and Burkina Faso? Uh, we saw that they uh, both uh, considered that any intervention in Niger would be considered uh, as a declaration of war. Uh, also, can you share with us your understanding to uh, what's happening in the region with, with military uh, leaders? Because we see that this is not the first coup in the region. And um, it seems that there are some um, uh, shared uh, uh, maybe atmosphere or uh, aspirations uh, in the military authorities to, uh, uh, to take power. Or if you can share, us, uh, share with us your thoughts about that. Thank you. Well, on the statement uh, in Mali and uh, Burkina, uh, I don't have any comment to make uh, uh, at this time. What I can tell you is that uh, tomorrow I will be flying to Bamako. So I will have interaction with the authorities and maybe these matters can be raised. But for as for now, uh, uh, I cannot make any comment. Uh, concerning the uh, situation, uh, general situation in the region, why the military that comes by waves. You, this used to be a pattern until 20, 30 years ago. Now it's coming back. But the sum of initial, ana initial analysis, preliminary analysis, this associates also with the deficit of uh, governance or, or in some time, some, but also on the uh, maybe contagion effects when things happen, one country might happen with country, but uh, I want to be cautious, uh, cautious with that because these are just preliminary things. There are no firm studies as far as I know on, because each country is different. Yeah, so, but it, this is a phenomenon we have to look at. What is clear is that uh, uh, the Equas want this to come to a stop. Jill C. Lineback. Uh, thanks very much. I, I wanted to uh, find out when exactly this week-long uh, uh, negotiation is, is begins. Is it today, as of today? And also, you mentioned that some countries in ECOWAS would be willing to intervene militarily. Uh, which countries are they, and do they include Chad? Thanks. Well, uh, about the, when they started, the, 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 the summit took place uh, last Sunday. So uh, the end of the, 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 the time frame given is next Sunday. So and on countries, I didn't say that there are some countries which were said the organization side. 
uh, is willing to intervene militarily, but not singling out individual countries, but the organization itself. Uh, okay, if I may follow up. So which countries in the organization have expressed interest in intervening militarily? Thanks. Well, they discussed the, uh, the situation. They approved the communique. This is uh, 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 what uh, I, I can say, but not individual countries. Okay, Joe Clark. Uh, I, I, it will not be appropriate for me to say this country said that, that country said that. No, this will not be appropriate for me to. Yeah, uh, Joe Klein of Canada Free Press. At the summit meeting that you mentioned, the ECOWAS summit meeting, um, and in the context of discussing possible military intervention, uh, did the um, subject of the of mercenaries and particularly the Wagner Group come up? Because uh, the Wagner Group is increasing uh, uh, its involvement in a number of the Sahel countries, and I believe has some presence um, in Niger. Yeah, that that was not. What? Yeah, yeah. Please, please, whoever else has their microphone on, please shut it down. Okay, uh, so, uh, okay, now, uh, uh, Mr. Shantoshima, can you repeat what you were saying? Sorry, someone else had a microphone on. Nope. Over to you. That the other Wagner group was not discussed in the summit. Okay, uh, and then last question. I know you, I know you have to head out, so uh, Evelyn, uh, over to you. Thank you, Farhan. Uh, Evelyn Leopold, Globetrotter Media. Um, looking at the long range problems in the Sahel, it seems that they get military help from all sorts of countries when they need it. They get humanitarian help from the United Nations and from other NGOs, which is fine, but it's a Band-Aid. And uh, is there any thought given to having real economic help such as schools to educate all the young people so they don't all drift to Europe and become migrants and, and other programs that even a military would agree to if it would. I'm just wondering if this is something the UN had planned or thought about and so forth. Well, the, the UN approach is to have uh, uh, humanitarian development and security interventions all com combined because without uh, 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 security there is no uh, 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 sustainable development you build something today tomorrow is going to be destroyed but uh, at some time it's important to, to provide short-term uh, 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 relief to the populations in need you have a displacement of populations uh, the number of refugees is increasing uh, uh, in the region. So all these uh, uh, three axes have to be uh, 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 dealt with uh, almost simultaneously. But uh, security, to, to, to bring security, is uh, paramount. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, and and, and uh, I'd like once again to thank our guest, uh, the Special Representative for uh, West Africa and the Sahel. This show has been produced by Depictions Media. Please contact us at depictions.media for more information.